Okay, spinal nerves. Spinal nerves come out of the vertebral column. And they come out of the vertebral column, and when they, when they are spinal nerve, they're mixed. But they don't start mixed. They're mixed because they have a sensory and, and a motor component, both motor, skeletal motor, and, and in, at least at some segments, also an autonomic motor component. But if we took a cross section through the spinal cord, this is what we would see. Here's the spinal cord. Here is a one root, and here's another root. And they're going to join. The, the dura comes right here. And so the, the dorsal root and the ventral root join to become the peripheral nerve. Now, there, there are a few things to say here. But before I go too much farther, I do want to make one uh, important uh, note. You are going to, I am going to say dorsal, and you're going to go to the clinic, and you're going to find that mo many physicians, perhaps most, will use posterior, where I say dorsal. So dorsal root could be posterior root. When I start talking about dorsal columns, they will talk about posterior columns. When I talk about the ventrolateral, they'll talk about the anterior lateral. OK, why is this? Because in a quadruped, let us go to the board for a moment. We have we have a brain and a spinal cord. And this is dorsal, and this is ventral, and this is anterior, and this is posterior. And then humans came along, and they did this thing. So now, what is dorsal in uh, a quadruped is now uh, both dorsal and posterior. And what is ventral in a quadruped is also anterior in a human. I, I am a basic scientist, so um, my preference is to use the dorsal and ventral. Uh, I also think that there's an advantage to using these uh, because you can read the primary literature, which is mostly written in, in, these, uh, in these terms. But you should be aware that these are synonymous when it comes to the human, and that you will see clinical uh, individual physicians, as well as clinical literature, that use posterior and anterior in place of dorsal and ventral in the spinal cord. Okay. So this dorsal root um, would be the posterior root to some. All right, so the dorsal root, the root that comes out of the back of the spinal cord is sensory. And the root that comes out of the ventrum of the sp spinal cord is, uh, is motor. And this motor is mixed between skeletal motor and autonomic motor, the preganglionics going out to an autonomic ganglion. This dorsal root ganglion, which sits at the, at the edge of where the root meets the nerve, is in fact in the periphery. So for example, if you give a toxin or if you give a dye, it will not get into the spinal cord, but it will label the dorsal root ganglion. So this, this um, ganglion is in the periphery. It is not protected by the blood-brain barrier, um, or, or it's not protected by any barrier. One more point just to, to um, drive home. In this, um, let's just think about this animal. And there's a cell here that has a split branch, one of which goes out to, say, the skin, and the other of which goes into the central nervous system. And this is not technically an axon. It's, it's, the whole thing is not an axon. It is a process, and it has two parts. It has a dendrite-like part and an axon-like part. You can think about this in, in terms of the law of dynamic polarization. This, at, this cell is gathering information from the skin, sending it to the cell body, and from there, it's going 
in that direction. So it's information coming in from the dendrite-like process going out through the axon-like process. Okay. So this is what it actually looks, this is how it actually looks, what you, I, I want to orient you. This is the um, end of the spinal cord. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little cone here that's called the conus medullaris. That's the very end of the spinal cord. And from there, there's a, uh, a, a, a collection of pia that's called the phylum terminale that is going to go out and when it comes to the um, dura, it's going to get invested with dura and become the coccygeal ligament. And this essentially keeps your whole spinal cord sac in place. The roots are, are leaving the dura through these, these concentrated places. And you can see here, there's a bunch of roots going out one. And if, if everything were just completely uh, as it's drawn here, what you should see at that exit point is just two roots. But the, the fact of the matter is that what you see are actually rootlets. They, the rootlets gather together and become uh, roots. Okay. So what's the difference between a root and a nerve? There's a big difference, and it's very, very important to understand this. So information that comes in to the central nervous system through the dorsal root, to the spinal cord through the dorsal root, is going to travel in both directions. And it's going to reach several segments. The spinal cord is a segmented structure. The root, every segment has one uh, bilateral set of roots. But this uh, information, this sensory information, will reach, say, three or four segments. So. If you cut this root, there are, there, this area of the spinal cord is still getting information from other roots because those other roots are also reaching several segments. In contrast, if you cut a nerve, what happens is that this sensory information from this segment and from another segment, they come together to form a nerve, not right here, but a little bit more distally, more peripherally. And so if you cut a nerve, you might get a complete loss of sensation from that part of the innervated body. But if you cut a root, you will not get a loss, a complete loss. You'll get a, a lessening. And the same thing is true with the motor system. It turns out that the motor neurons that supply any given muscle sit in a pool that goes over a length of spinal cord. And because of that, if you cut a root, you get weakness. But if you cut a uh, nerve, you get a loss of, um, a complete loss of function. So this is now illustrated here. And I'm going to introduce a couple more terms. But let's start on the motor side. What I just told you was that there's a motor neuron pool. This is a sagittal uh, or horizontal section um, it's a section that's going through this. So this would be rostral, and this would be caudal. This is the midline, right and left. And so what you see is that there's a, 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 a column, a long column of motor neurons that send axons out through multiple, uh, through mo multiple routes. And these multiple, the axons from these multiple routes will all gather into a single nerve to innervate that muscle. So if you cut one of these roots, if one of these roots is, is either lesioned or damaged in any way, you're going to get weakness. But if the nerve is lesioned, you're going to get paralysis. You don't have any access to that muscle. Can't move, not for any reason. OK, so that's the difference, weakness versus paralysis. On the other side, we have a slightly different situation. It is true that out here, here you would have a less, less of a um, loss of a sensation, and here you would have what we, we would call an anesthesia, no sensation from that patch of skin. But more importantly, sensory lesions happen to give you what is called what are called positive signs. So a positive sign means, uh, well, let's what's a negative what's a negative sign? A negative sign is anesthesia or paralysis. 
whatever is uh, interrupted can't happen, doesn't happen. A positive sign is something that shouldn't be happening is now happening. So for example, in the somatosensory system, if you, uh, if you cut a somatosensory nerve or if you damage it, what happens is that the, um, you, you now get this, the, you get the wrong sensation. You get a spontaneous sensation of numbness or pins and needles or, um, or it could be frank pain. You could get spontaneous pain where there's no stimulus. So it's the wrong sensation for the, uh, for the stimulus. And that is called a dysesthesia. Uh, it's called a paresthesia is the, is the general term. And when it's unpleasant, which it typically is, it's called a dysesthesia. A, another example of this, just to give you from a different modality, is in the hearing department. If you lose hearing, you might get a, that's a negative sign. To be deaf is to, or to be hard of hearing is a negative sign. The positive sign associated with that is tinnitus or tinnitus, a ringing in the ear. That's a positive thing. You, there's no ringing there, but you're hearing a ringing of the ear. Okay, so in general, sensory uh, lesions give you positive signs and um, motor lesions give you only negative signs. Um, sensory lesions give you positive and negative signs. Typically, the positive signs are more bothersome. In Bobby's case, he had positive signs because he had interruption of the two somatosensory pathways, and so he felt pins and needles all over his body. Okay, so in, in, the, next, uh, in the next video, we're going to look at the topography of the spinal cord.